Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining our men's health webinar. My name is Abraham, and I'll be the moderator for tonight. Uh, we'll start with a few housekeeping items, and then I'll introduce our speaker. So first, your attendance tonight is completely anonymous to other attendees. No one can see your face or your name, and any comments or questions can only be seen by myself and our speaker. If you wish to ask a question, I ask that you please type it in the chat box at the lower part of your screen, and we will be sure to answer them during the Q&A session of the presentation. The webinar tonight could last for approximately one hour and will be presented by Dr. Jones of Urology Austin. Dr. Lauren Jones is a board certified urologist with Urology Austin. He received his Doctor of Medicine from Southern Illinois University School of Medicine and completed his six year urology residency at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Dr. Jones has a special interest in minimally invasive surgery, treating a wide variety of urologic conditions with different techniques. Dr. Jones sees both male and female patients and treats all general urologic conditions, including complex kidney stones, enlarged prostate, urinary incontinence, erectile dysfunction, and low testosterone. In addition, Dr. Do Dr. Jones diagnoses and treats patients with bladder cancer, kidney cancer, testicular cancer, and prostate cancer. We have a lot of great content to cover tonight. So uh, Dr. Jones, I'm gonna turn it over to you so we can get started. Uh, great, thank you, Abraham, and welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. That's me. Uh, so this is what we're going to cover tonight. We're going to talk uh, a lot about the prostate. That's the, the focus of this webinar. We're going to talk about what the prostate is, where it lives, and what it does. Uh, and then we're going to focus on BPH or enlarged prostate and the treatment options for that. So first, what is the prostate? Uh, I'm sure most of us logged on tonight are men. Uh, only men have prostates. Uh, and it's a walnut-sized gland that lives right outside the urinary bladder and grows around the urethra. Its function is to pr produce some of the fluid that we use to transport sperm during ejaculation, some of the seminal fluid. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, as we'll find out later, it continues to grow throughout our lives. You know, it grows after puberty until our 20s, and then it kind of stops for a little bit. And then as uh, we get 40 and older, it grows for the rest of our lives, causing some problems. Uh, so three, you know, three things that we'll talk about briefly that can happen to the prostate. Uh, enlarged prostate or BPH, which is the main focus of the webinar, uh, or prostatitis uh, or prostate cancer. Uh, some, you know, they share some symptoms between these three conditions. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about how, how to differentiate them uh, and, and what to do about them. So again, BPH is the focus uh, of, of our talk tonight, and, and BPH is enlarged prostate. It stands for benign prostate hyperplasia, which is a fancy name for saying enlarged prostate. Uh, the normal prostate is, uh, you know, as they say here on the slide, about 1.5 inches in diameter. It's 20 to 30 milliliters. When the prostate grows, like I said earlier, it grows like a donut around the urinary channel of the urethra. So as it grows, it starts pinching off that urinary channel and makes it harder to pass urine. Uh, it makes it slower for the urine to flow. Uh, so what that does is it leads to the bladder outlet obstruction, which is blockage of the bladder, and that can cause the lower urinary tract symptoms, which we call LUTs, and those are the things we commonly think about, slowing stream, incomplete emptying, uh, and, and all the other enlarged prostate symptoms. thing to know about BPH um, is it's not related to prostate cancer. Having BPH doesn't mean you don't have prostate cancer, but they're, they're completely different diseases. Having BPH doesn't make you more likely to have prostate cancer, um, but the symptoms can be similar. So if you have any of these symptoms, it is you know, recommended that you see a urologist. Um, and as it says at the, book, at the end, PSA, the prostate specific antigen levels do not distinguish BPH from prostate cancer. Both of these conditions, BPH and prostate cancer can cause elevated PSAs. And so again, it's important to talk to your urologist if you have an abnormal PSA. So again, this prostate, as it enlarges, it starts putting pressure on the urethra, causing these symptoms. You can see from the diagram on the left side, normal sized prostate, there's kind of a nice wide open channel going through the prostate. And on the right side, in the cartoon, the prostate grows, starts pinching off that channel. And you can imagine that makes it harder for the urine to flow there. 
What's interesting is that the size of the prostate doesn't necessarily correlate with the symptoms. It's all about the size of that internal channel. So some men have really large prostates with a big channel on the inside and they pee just fine. Other men have, you know, what we would say normal sized prostates, only 20 or 30 milliliters. Uh, but it just happens to be growing in the exact wrong spot, pinching off that channel, causing these uh, severe symptoms. So the symptoms are kind of, you know, just what you would think. Uh, frequent urination, incomplete emptying, weak stream or slowing stream, trouble starting and stopping, uh, difficulty starting at all, um, some pain with urination, or having that severe urgency and having to get to the bathroom quickly, or even leaking a little bit because you can't get there in time. Uh, and BPH can pretty significantly affect quality of life. You can see from the slide, Uh, that, you know, nearly every man with moderate symptoms is, is, is unhappy uh, because, you know, it's not normal to, to struggle with, you know, such a basic uh, part of life. Uh, and about half of men say that BPH interferes with an aspect of their normal life. Some men experience sexual problems associated with the lower urinary tract symptoms. And BPH also affects your partner's quality of life. Uh, daily routines and relationships. And you can imagine if you're waking up three or four times a night to pee, uh, the person laying in bed next to you may not uh, appreciate that. So who can get it? It's most common in men over age of 50. Um, and truthfully, uh, by the time we get to be 85, nearly all of us have some degree of BPH symptoms. It's just extraordinarily common. Uh, we estimate that at least 14 million men in the United States have some lower urinary tract uh, symptoms. And uh, obesity or having a higher body mass index or weight may increase the risk of BPH. So if you have these symptoms, how is this diagnosed? Uh, first of all, you see your urologist and you may get a digital rectal exam, which is where we feel the prostate. Uh, you may get some testing on your urinary flow where we measure the flow rate of, of urine coming out of your bladder. Uh, and then often we'll get an ultrasound measuring the post-void urine volume, uh, where we actually see how much urine is left over in the bladder after you pee. There are some things you can do at home to see how severe your symptoms are. In either one of these first two questionnaires, the AUA, American Urologic Association Symptom Index, or the IPSS, or the International Prostate Symptom Score, uh, are really good. You, you can do those at home. They're easily to find uh, you know, on the internet with a quick uh, search answer the questions yourself and bring that with you to your primary care physician and urologist's office. And that really gives us a good feel you know, for how, se how severe your symptoms are. So that's a you know, quick overview of what BPH is and you know, how we diagnose it. Uh, so now we're gonna kind of transition into what the treatment options are for it. It's important to know that, that there are options, you know? I often see men that say, you know, gosh, I can't, you know, play three holes of golf without peeing. And now I wake up three or four times a night, but hey, that's just life. I'm 70 now. But the truth is, uh, that's not normal. You don't have to live that way. There are a lot of options to make this better. You know, the easiest things are changing your behavior, which a lot of people kind of do even involuntarily. Restricting fluid, not drinking before bed, not, you know, drinking or eating things that you want to because you think that it might cause a bladder or urinary issue in a few hours. Once you see, you know, the doctor, there, there are a few first-line therapies that are really easy. BPH medications, obviously, uh, are, are very common. After that, we have a couple of minimally invasive options, like to resume water vapor therapy uh, or the, the permanent implants to stent open the prostate. After that, we have more invasive surgical procedures, like the green light laser therapy, uh, the TURP, uh, or a simple prostatectomy. I often get asked about alternative medicines, dietary supplements, things you can buy over the counter. Uh, and the truth is I, I rarely recommend for them uh, just because there's not a, a lot of, of data to, to support them in the management of, of these symptoms. Uh, you know, that said, it generally doesn't cause any harm. So I don't really recommend against them either. But what I, say, I, I often say is I, I don't recommend for them just because there's no data to support it. So starting with the least investment, invasive option, watchful waiting, obviously. That means just, you know, using lifestyle modifications, not taking any medication or undergoing any procedure for this. 
the, the challenge with this is it truthfully doesn't work very often because even if you can get your symptoms under good control when they start, the condition continues to worsen. The prostate continues to grow as we get older. So long-term, only about 19% of men uh, end up satisfied with this. First-line therapy are often medications like alpha blockers. Common ones are tamsulosin or celadocin. They're safe, well-tolerated medications. And what they do is relax the muscle inside the prostate to make the urinary channel a little bit bigger. It does make it a little bit easier for urine to flow freely. Um, there are some side effects that are generally well-tolerated, including a little bit of lightheadedness or dizziness or fatigue. A lot of men are so dissatisfied with this, or they can't remember to take a medication and stop it even within a year. And what I often say about these medications is they don't alter the course of the disease. They're just for symptomatic relief. And so, you know, even if you're taking this medication, you're urinating better, the prostate's still there. It's still growing and it will continue to worsen and often get so bad that the medication no longer works. Another class of medicine are these, the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. The most common ones of this are finasteride or dutasteride. And what these do is they block a, a hormone that, re that uh, acts on the prostate cells that makes them grow. So over time, they can actually shrink the prostate. It does take a long time for it to work, at least six months. And it does have some side effects. The most common are sexual side effects, like erectile dysfunction or low libido. This medication also doesn't work as well as the alpha blockers for symptomatic relief, but it does slightly alter the course of the disease. They're often used in combination. A first line minimally invasive therapy is uh, the resume water vapor therapy. This is an outpatient treatment that can be done in the office or operating room. Uh, that uses uh, high energy water vapor to shrink excess prostate tissue. Uh, you know, in the office, this, this water vapor is injected into the prostate and it makes some of the prostate uh, cells die and slough off and open up a nice big urinary channel. Uh, it does work well. It does not require general anesthesia and there's no permanent implant. Um, very low retreatment within five years. It does have some side effects. Obviously there's a recovery like with anything. Um, so in the short term, it may cause some painful or frequent urination, some blood in the urine or semen. Long term, it can cause decreased ejaculatory volume. Um, other risks include urinary tract infection or short term urgency. So how does it work? Resume water vapor therapy is a non-surgical treatment for BPH. Resume uses the natural energy found in steam to shrink the prostate. In just seconds, this precise technology destroys enlarged prostate tissue while minimizing any effect on surrounding tissue. Resume is a potential alternative to drug therapy, permanent implants, and surgery. It preserves sexual and urinary functions, and it's clinically proven to safely and effectively reduce BPH symptoms. Potential side effects include painful urination, blood in the urine or semen, pelvic pain, and urinary frequency, retention, or urgency. The procedure is performed right in your doctor's office or outpatient center. You do not need general anesthesia for the procedure and Resume Therapy lets you quickly return to normal activities. Talk to your doctor about Resume if you are no longer comfortable with your BPH symptoms. Drug therapy isn't working for you. The side effects from drugs are impacting your quality of life, or you don't want to have surgery or get an implant. I found out that I had BPH, my symptoms were a slow stream, and I would wake up uh, frequently in the middle of the night. 
I first sort of resume when I was uh, researching enlarged prostate and the procedures to repair it, to fix it. And uh, resume was one of them. The more I researched resume, the, uh, it was the latest and greatest technology, and I want to be part of new technology. I think technology is good. My experience with the resume procedure was very good. After the procedure, I was uh, a little worn, a little tired, and the next day I felt fairly good and was able to get up and get around. Since Joe's resume procedure, we're able to spend much more quality time together, fewer interruptions, and we're just happier as a couple. The resume treatment has made a very big difference in our life. And as you can see, it has a very high patient satisfaction rating. Another minimally invasive option is the prosthetic urethral lift. Uh, this is another outpatient procedure that can be done in the office or operating room. Now with this one though, there are uh, implants that are used to stent open the, the, the prostate out of the way so it no longer blocks the urethra. Um, it doesn't require general anesthesia. Uh, it does have permanent implants and it does have a, a slightly higher surgical retreatment rate through five years. Very similar side effects with some painful or frequent urination and blood in the urine. A pain, urgency. Uh, these implants can develop stones uh, and rarely can cause the inability to urinate. The sort of next line therapy is, is the green light laser therapy. Uh, this is an outpatient procedure that, that does require general anesthesia, but it's same day surgery, you go home the same day. Uh, and with this one, we use a laser uh, to shave out the extra prostate tissue to open up a nice big urinary channel. Uh, it's highly successful, has a very low uh, surgical retreatment rate, uh, again, with uh, very similar side effects. Some pain with urination, small risk of urinary tract infection, uh, bleeding, uh, a very small percentage of men leak urine afterwards. Uh, dry orgasm uh, does happen, and erectile dysfunction is also a, a rare side effect. So how does the green light work? Now, here's a nice video that uh, outlines it. Uh, the truth is they all, uh, you know, the goal of any of these uh, procedures is to get the prostate tissue out of the way, either by stenting it out of the way like the prostatic urethral lift uh, or removing the tissue with the resume uh, or like in this demonstration with the green line. Another option is uh, the more traditional uh, method of transurethral resection of the prostate or TURP, uh, T-U-R-P. Uh, this is an outpatient or sometimes inpatient procedure that uses a heated wire or I call it an electrical loop to cut the tissue from the prostate. It's ultimately the same procedure as the green light with a little bit different energy. Uh, instead of the laser vaporizing the tissue, 
uh, the loop cuts out the tissue. The end goal is the same to open up a nice big urinary channel. This, this again requires general anesthesia and has a relatively low surgical retreatment rate. Very similar side effects. In fact, I would say the exact same side effects. It does have a higher, slightly higher bleeding risk than, than the green light or any of the others, um, uh, but it has very good outcomes. Uh, prostatectomy is actually surgical removal of the majority of the prostate. Uh, in, in this, in this instance, we're talking about simple prostatectomy, which is used for enlarged uh, prostate and not radical prostatectomy that we would be doing for a prostate cancer. Uh, this one is general anesthesia, generally requires a hospital admission um, where you actually open up the, the bladder and prostate capsule and remove the enlarged portion of the prostate. A highly effective, but, but very much more invasive than any of the others. A significantly higher risk of bleeding or blood transfusion. Um, uh, and again, requires uh, more of a hospital stay than any of the others. As far as insurance coverage, um, in general, these procedures are covered. You know, every plan is a little bit different, but all of them are uh, you know, FDA approved and, and have very high success rates. And so in general, they're covered. Of course, there's no guarantee for that. And it's uh, ultimately the patient's responsibility to, to ensure coverage uh, from their insurance provider. Uh, so this is what we went over. We uh, learned a little bit about the prostate and what it does. Uh, and then in large prostate, um, equals BPH, you know, that's our medical jargon. And then we talked about the treat treatment options, everything from watchful waiting uh, to the medications to resume, prostatic urethral lift, uh, and then the surgical procedures, which are the green light, TURP, uh, and simple prostatectomy. Uh, so the next steps, obviously, is uh, consultation with your urologist. Uh, to determine which of these therapies, if any, is, is appropriate for you. Uh, if you don't have a urologist, I'm, I'm happy to, to take care of you and review all this stuff again. Um, uh, but, uh, Urology Austin also has a, a bunch of locations throughout Central Texas, uh, and, and uh, we're happy to direct you into the uh, best uh, possible care. You can see my contact uh, information here, uh, the phone number, and uh, that's where I am. I'm generally on the north side of Austin and Round Rock, um, but again, we have uh, locations uh, all over Central Texas. Uh, so I believe that's the end of, of my portion. I'm, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Abraham, who uh, is going to